and okay. hit the right hand of that button there. What side? This? Hi. Thanks, Harry, and it's good to be here. I just hope I can work this thing. Okay, so my presentation, I broke down the early years, 1974. Uh, we'll talk about the surplus quota that came out, um, how we do price determination, um, our leasing pool that we run for the um, pullets, uh, Quebec and Ontario, our relationship and our COP study, the national system, um, most of you maybe heard the Ag Minister's decision and what's next. Interesting to read, and I'll try to give you a brief synopsis of what all happened then. So in 1972, the pullet growers uh, formed. He likes to say that they were there before the eggs and they ran for a few years the, um, as an agency. In 1973, Minister Stewart dissolved them and put them together with the egg boards uh, to work together. Um, they tried it for a couple of years, it did not work good. In 1973, they started their own marketing board again because um, trouble with the egg board. Um, Craig Hunter can give me some information. He was on that board, I think, so he was a young man then too, though. <laughs> but um, eight months later, they disbanded the, the marketing board of the Pullets. And um, my record said that was the first one that they disbanded, and they were put under um, the care of the egg producers. The government of the day, when they made the plan for the egg producers, insisted it included the uh, egg producers, hatcheries, breeder growers, and pullets. Um, it seemed like a great plan. At the same time, two other provinces did it too. Um, Manitoba and Nova Scotia were the only two that did it. But by 1978, the pullet producers felt that they were getting a bad ch um, change of this. Um, the, they felt the egg board was only looking after the egg producers. They were allowing more people to start, and they were looking at empty barns moving forward. So they revived the Pullet Growers Association. So in the next year, there was many meetings between the egg farmers and the pullet producers with the Farm Products Marketing Board. Um, at that point, they went back and forth. And finally, the um, egg minister decides to appoint two members to the board, um, Betty H Henderson and Minnie Vandermolen. Um, they were told to license the quotas for the pullet producers. The statement I have is, um, egg board told to license pullets and stop new entrants. It didn't really do much good if they weren't gonna enforce it. So the pullet association uh, had hearings with the board, uh, went to the farm products, and they held in 1981, um, nine days of hearings with the tribunal. And um, what the pullet producers were looking for was um, they wanted to be licensed, they wanted quotas. And at that point, they were talking about conversion for because there was too many pullet farms. So there was a conversion of 10 to 1 up to a maximum of 2,500 where they could get layers. At the end of the hearings, the tribunal sided with the pullet producers, and that was the beginning of our pullet system but the damage was done. Um, at that point, there was 7 million egg layer quota, and the pullet quota was over 12 million birds. Quite a surplus. So what happened after that? Uh, the board decided to set up a program of trying to reduce it. Um, for a long time, it was if you bought pullet quota, unless you bought a whole farm, half the pullet quota would disappear, so 50%. If I had 100,000 birds, I could only sell 50,000, the board took 50. Then it was changed that I could buy 90% and 10% would fall away. And then um, later on it became that the numbers became close. Probably, I'm thinking I was in the business then, so probably about 1995, 1996. Um, to the point where this year, I think it'll be one of the first years that the utilization is going to be coming close to the 100% number. We've been since so the last few years, our best year was a few years ago, we hit 98%, but the last two years we've dropped down to 96, and I'm pretty confident this year is gonna be a really good year. So, pull pricing. Um, the setup of the negotiations was, instead of um, having the power like the egg board where you could set the price, the pullet sector was supposed to negotiate a price with the feed companies and contractors. This is kind of, um, 
not a great way of setting price. The pullet guys can ask for it. The feed guys don't really have to give a reason, or the hatcheries, they could just say no, and there was no um, binding arbitration or anywhere to go with it. In 1996, the board requested um, additional authority from for negotiations and arbitration, uh, arbitration from Farm Products Marketing Agency. Um, the request was denied at that point, stating that there are too many birds Polis could come in from U.S., Quebec, and Manitoba. As U.S. and Quebec did not have anything, um, that could happen. In the meantime, um, bringing us to today, um, the U.S., we have no imports of U.S. pullets. Um, the, the SE insurance policy that was started was for Canadian-only pullets, and so there's no import of pullets on that. It's a non-tariff trade barrier. Um, Quebec, we've worked hard with them, and I'll be talking more. But Quebec has started a marketing plan for their pullets. Um, they're almost done, but I. No, no, these are right at the beginning. Oh, they? Yeah, these started at the same time we did. So, um, yeah, in Manitoba, they're not going to truck them that far because it's a long way. But anyways, <laughs> um, so really the issues aren't there anymore of interprovincial movement or out of pro province movement. The other thing we've done over the years is a leasing program on pullets. And the reason we did that is um, when I got on the board, there was a lot of empty barns. There was a timing issue where certain times of the year they um, had big placements and other times un, uh, smaller placements. Um, at that point, sometimes it was the contractors that took care of it. And if you were their friend, he would lease your quote out. But if they didn't really like you, you sat empty. So we decided that the board to do is to make a leasing pool where everybody was treated equal. Um, the money came in and then it was divided amongst the people that didn't get a barn full. With this, we also opened up the Eastern Ontario market to lease quota, and it helped bring some of the market that where people were getting them out of province, that they started building barns and moving the quota there. Um, it's been a very successful program. We are still using it. And I think because the pullets, the flow doesn't always go equally, depending on where your customer are, sometimes you need extra birds, sometimes you don't. It's really working well. So the Quebec Ontario COP. So in 2008, we met with Quebec. Quebec had just started an association, on a, a pullet association. The first question they asked if anybody had a COP study on pullets and what the price should be. Um, at that point, uh, it was actually Harry and I met with Manuel de Stryker for Quebec. And we said we'd be interested in doing a joint one together between the two provinces. So we did that in 2008. On, 2007 numbers, and we intentionally used the same firm as Ake Farms of Canada did at that point, Norris Meyer Penny, because if it was good for one, it should be good for the other one. Um, we did the COP, we got the numbers, and all of a sudden Quebec goes, wait a minute, at this price, if we do that, everybody jump in the business. So they decided that they needed early marketing in Quebec. Um, they've worked hard over the years, but it's been a long haul because we're at 2014 and they're almost done now. But what they've done is they've started a supply management for pullets in Quebec. Um, they've almost got it done. They've um, got one piece, right? So uh, I'll just go in there a little bit. They've been able to get, first they had to get the right to uh, have a marketing board from the regime. They got that. They've got the right to levy their pullet producers, which they do. They have the right to negotiate a price. They have all the regulations approved. The last thing they were lacking is a, uh, allocation for pullets, the beginning allocation. Um, we met with them last week. They have had a vote this summer on it. Um, it's in front of their government body. We have farm products. They call it the Regie. And it should be, um, they said they'll probably have hearings in January, but they're hoping by the middle of the year to have a plan in place and that uh, be going forward. We've had to have patience, but we see this implemented soon. So pullets on a national agency. In, um, this was attempted first in 1980. If I look at the documents I have, there wasn't much interest in the provinces. And as you look at ours, um, the relationship with pulp producers and egg farmers weren't that great. So in 2005, we sat at the EFC meeting. Um, there was Peter Clark, who's now chair of Egg Farmers of Canada, but he was a pull rep from Nova Scotia, myself and Cal Dirks. And we thought we'd start an association. We'd always talk about the things, so maybe we should sit down and talk together. Um, we asked the other provinces to join. 
They all joined except for BC, which was fine. Um, we were incorporated, it started in 2006, and I was elected chair of it, and I've continued to do that. In, in 2010, Laurent Pelleron became chair, chair of Farm Products Marketing Board of Canada. He invited us into a meeting with him, and he um, explained to us that the legislation of an agency two system, which uh, eggs and broilers and turkeys fall under, is still open, and um, if we wanted to, we could apply for it. So at that point, we changed our name to Polk Gores of Canada, and we went gun ho on looking for a national agency. On July 17, 2012, we did provide um, a proposal to the Farm Products Marketing Council. At po that point, they could have either turned us down or continued going forward. Um, they approved and started the gazetting stages in December. Um, in 2013, we held hearings in Ottawa and Winnipeg. And um, going forward, um, then we had to wait for the Farm Products Council had to write um, a brief and a recommendation to the minister. It was given to the minister after annual meeting, probably in March, April. Um, at that point, the Minister of Agriculture did turn us down. Um, we've never received a message in writing for them, but they also gave us some options that we are looking at now on how we can do the same things as an agency without having agency status. And they said we probably could do that and they kind of encouraged us to go that way. So going forward, we're going to continue to work with um, in a very positive environment with the eight farmers of Ontario. And I have to say that the years on the board have been great, and it has been. If I talk about the old days, it's not like that now. We have a great relationship, and we have a great relationship with the egg farms of Canada moving forward. And we're going to talk about doing joint ventures with them moving forward. We have an end of the surplus um, pull quota, which was a big sticking point in going forward. And we're hoping in this year that we can implement a fair farm price based on our COP. So those are the things we're looking forward to. So any questions about the pullet industry? Okay, thank you. Thanks, Andy. Uh, needless to say, Andy's worked extremely hard on this uh, issue over the years, and especially lately with, with some of the meetings that we've been having with Quebec, and it, it needs to, uh, really important to try to work out a deal with Quebec, and again, we're, we're just waiting to, to uh, see how they uh, make out between themselves. As Harry said, we're a little different in Ontario that we're connected with our pullet uh, industry, whereas they have to keep some distance between, between uh, the egg farmers of Quebec and the pullet growers of Quebec. So anyway, we're working towards it, and uh, uh, it is something that's interesting. Uh, uh, having some meetings this summer, I talked to guys that came back that used to be egg farmers uh, a number of years ago, and uh, one guy in particular said to me, he says, are you guys still talking about that? You were talking about that 20, 25 years ago. So, and again, it's important to, to understand that for every layer we have in our barn, there's a pullet that's growing, right? So it, 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 we, we, we take a lot of pride in, in uh, representing both egg farmers and pullet growers, and uh, we just hope that they can be remunerated a little better than they have been in the past. So um, one thing I want to mention, and Harry uh, touched on it a little bit, um, is just in regards to the economic impact of this, uh, of this business. And... Um, as chair, I, I sit on a president's council, and uh, that's where all the chairs of all the different commodities get together and, and uh, discuss some of the big, big issues that uh, uh, affect Ontario agriculture. About a year ago, when the premier was our minister of agriculture, she had a challenge for agriculture that we were going to double our, our revenue in, in, in agriculture and also increase jobs. I think by 100,000 people or up to 120,000 people. I, anyway, um, that's a challenge that was put out. And from the standpoint of supply management, 
it's really important to to remember that we do have a vibrant grading uh, segment to our business. Obviously, all these eggs are graded here in Ontario. Uh, they're moved on to the the process market, all kinds of processors across Ontario. Besides, I believe, Harry, the breaker plants that you're talking about, lots of different companies that, that process these eggs. And as Harry mentioned, we have everybody that supports this, this, this business, what you call downstream, the people that uh, provide our inputs to produce eggs, and then where that product goes and how it's processed and gets to the consumers. And I think it's important to understand, and I saw a video the other day that I've shared with, with our board, and um, the whole idea of how important our processed processing industry is in Ontario. When you start looking at, at a challenge from, from the, the Premier, uh, we're not going to increase the number of jobs on the farm. It's just not the reality out there. We're going to increase jobs by what we do to process product and value add it and come up with new products and that type of thing. So I think, again, we have a very good uh, industry that has promoted that type of thing. And as Harry mentioned, you know, we have multinational companies that have been situated here and at, at their whim, they just decide they're going to move south or wherever they might go. So you have somebody like Heinz, you have somebody like Kellogg's, you have all kinds of people in the fruit and veg processing business that have left this country because they're multinational. And I'm, I'm really proud that we have people and Canadian people that have invested in, in not just our business as primary producers, but also beyond that in the grading and the processing end of things. So whenever you're talking to somebody, make sure they understand that because, uh, again, we have uh, this video that uh, uh, I shared, again, with uh, our board, and it came from a guy that's a staff person for our Minister of Agriculture and our, our provincial minister, Minister Leal. And he said, you look at this, this uh, video and you tell me what you think of it. And basically it's about producing raw product that's going to go south to be processed and come back here as a value-added product. And to me, that strategy just doesn't cut it. it, it, it it's uh, very short-sighted. I mean, we do have a lot of raw product. I mean, our oil and everything else goes south. But that's not to say that we shouldn't establish more in our processing uh, end of things. And again, that is what's going to really create the jobs for, for our province and our country. So anyway, I just wanted to make that point because, again, it's something I think we really need to be proud of. That video did not show anything related to supply management because it didn't fit the, 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 the theory that, that they have. That, and again, this was put out by Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada that we should be happy to produce raw product for the United States so they can value add it and they can do whatever they want and send it back to be by, you know, to feed Canadians. And I mean, it's just, uh, it just doesn't make any sense. And I, I'm, I know that's not the strategy that we have in Ontario for sure. So um, from here, where